especially timely that we have the chairman of the New York Republican Party, Ed Cox, with us here to continue the conversation. So, in the case of Congressman Grimm, he now says he will resign. Right course of action? Of course. Uh, he uh, admitted to one count of felony, and with the other 19 counts of the 20, he admitted to the underlying facts. He had no choice but to resign. And Speaker Boehner has a no-tolerance policy for matters like this. He's been a great congressman, frankly. He whipped the whole thing together in Congress to get Sandy aid after the Hurricane Sandy really hurt not just his district but all of New York City. He did a great job in that. I work with him on that. He is, did a great job as a congressman, but he made a mistake in this little business that he started up. And uh, so with, with that in mind, three minutes that, that remain, uh, is, is this a case, though, of selective prosecution? Did he become a target precisely because he had that Staten Island seat? With, with that lead in with the reporter, that was about his finances. That's where the investigation started. There was nothing there. This is all about a small business that he started in New York. And uh, let me tell you, starting a small business in New York City with all the regulations involved is tough. He just went a little bit too far back then and, uh, and violated the law, and he's paying a price now for it. Uh, obviously, Louisiana is a long way from New York State, but continuing with the topic of Congress. Today, we're greeted by headlines that Louisiana Congressman Steve Scalise, the uh, Republican whip on the Hill, spoke to a, quote, uh, supremacist group uh, back in the early uh, 2000s, over a decade ago, he said, I, I did speak to them. I didn't know the background of that group. Oh, of course. You speak to a lot of groups when you're campaigning. Well, the important thing is what you say to that group. And I haven't seen any report that he said something that was not proper. And we will continue to, to see what happens uh, with regards to Congressman Scalise. And that's, that's worth noting. Now, Ed, we've got a minute and a half left. And forgive me, but I've got to turn personal. You obviously married uh, the daughter of the president, uh, Tricia Nixon Cox. The love of my life. And I just wonder, as a young man, going in to ask for the hand of the daughter of the, of the president of the United States in marriage, uh, what was that like for you to uh, inform well, the president of the Well, when we first friends? met, it was in 1963. They had just moved to New York. We were both seniors in high school. She went to my sister's high school. And then he was just, uh, he well, had failed in his run for to be governor of California. And uh, he was just a lawyer. And I had known him for eight years by that time. So it was relatively easy. To me, he was Trisha's father, uh, not the president of the United States. So if familiarity did not breed contempt, it bred respect, <laughs> oh, but you, you were not ill at ease going in to <laughs> ask the question. Not at all with, uh, with Mr. Nixon. i uh, would known him a long time, and even when he was a lawyer, though, he was a great man. This is a, a person who wasn't made great by his office, but he was a great man per se. Is there, 30 seconds, is there anything people don't know about Dick Nixon that might surprise them from your perspective? Um, well, I think he's one of the best known presidents because of the tapes and all uh, uh, the diaries and all that. But, uh, but uh, this was just an extra a great man in all senses of the word uh, and the extraordinary abilities. And his administration, as people look at it historically, it proved to be one of the watershed administrations in the United States. Fair enough. Ed Cox, chairman of the New York State Republican Party, thanks for your time, and America's Forum continues right after this.